Welcome to the boys, this is Cobb, and oh my, is Mr. Hackbait in for a rude awakening, man. Triple Storm Caller opener going into an amalgam. An amalgamation <laughs> of crawlers, dude. All right, man, this room is actually submitted by Mr. Wien Pirat over here, who's playing Speed Specialist, opening up with mass crawlers and sledges. And ooh, the storm is actually connecting very, very kindly indeed on the sledgehammers, eradicating them in one side. This n just absolute nerd, this geek over here, is just completely ignoring his job. Fit to get fired in just a second. Crawler's damage is already done. They are going to punch through the stormies, as is about predicted. And as the building drops, yeah, as soon as this uh, arc light's dead, it's kind of over, right? Go ahead and speed this one up. And the theme of this video, I should also introduce is going to be how ridiculous it is, is that you can get more than one of the same skill card, right? You can double up on things like... I don't know, charged ammo. Actually, can you? Is that even in the game anymore right now? <laughs> Did they temporarily remove it? I don't actually know if it's even back, but... Things like Orbital Javelin. Things like Skill Specialist. Which is going to be the theme of this one. And it's just going to be sick. Okay, man. So, we see... Oh my goodness. Okay, we go straight into wasps on the flank. No further units coming down here. You gotta expect that the arc lights are gonna come out. They're actually coming out big as well. I think we actually saved 200 supply here. Uh, on Pirat's side. I feel like a Dothraki when I say this name. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, man, arc lights come out swinging, range enhancement. I feel like this is gonna be real rough with really just the wasps kind of carrying the dare, right? Like, even with the wasps getting the building kill. Surely, like, all of the crawlers still die, right? Okay, it's actually, like, pretty close in the end. Some enemy crawlers here still piling in. We got one pack here, one pack here. All right, man. But yeah, the wasps obviously going to carry the deer because there's just no counter to them. And there it is. All right. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Let's slow this down real quick. We got wraiths. We got rhinos. Ooh. We ain't going for the three maxmen. I think that's pretty smart. You already know you're up against Arclights with tech, and four of them at that, and I think just grabbing the maximum makes sense. Doesn't make any sense to go for an extra air unit. You're expecting your opponent to start to counter air units now, right? Given that you went into Wasp last round. What's the best option for Red? He actually just goes straight into the maximum as well? I mean, I can see that. I think that's fine. Ooh, we actually sell on the Wasps right away. More Crawlers coming out. Not sure how- oh my goodness. What- dude, what is this? Dude, Red is an absolute madman. What the hell is this? Range and Assault Mode coming out turn one right away? Wow, man. Okay, I mean, like, the Range Enhancement on Maximum is good. The Assault Mode is insanity. He's just crazed. Now, can these maxmen actually latch on these arc lights and get them dead before the crawlers run in and intervene? That's the real question. I think they do get to latch, right? This guy definitely does, because these crawlers are going to be distracted now. So that's a happy little bit of positioning right there. So the challenges are really going to be this side, uh, this arc light and this arc light, right? Can this maxman and this maxman connect where they need to connect? It's big. Of course they can. Literally round defining. Even if these maximum die now, it doesn't really matter that much. They've kind of done their job at this point. Now, the assault maxman. On the other hand. I don't know if they're actually overcomable in this round. But that said, winning one round this early on as red, is it going to be that beneficial even? Oh my god, they're still actually going to die, right? Oh my goodness, they actually just straight up... They're actually just able to rush down the building. That's going to make a huge difference. Second building even dropping as well. So, yeah, these assault maxmen could be as strong as they want. But, wow, I didn't expect the buildings to go down that quickly, that easily. But there you go, man. I was about to say, it's all well and good going assault mode now early on. Might win you one round. In this case, it didn't. But later on, is it the kind of thing that's going to help you win later on in the game? Obel Javelin comes down for win. It's going to be a double kill over there. That's huge. To eliminate those two guys immediately. Subsidized arc light. Wow, we get the Electromag Sledgehammers coming out. 
Do you feel like those sledgehammer? Like, I, I do feel like we could really use some chaff here and here. Or maybe here, here, and here. And then getting range on those sledgehammers. That would be my priority going into the next round. Uh, personally speaking. Because I feel like the reason you go Electromag on the sledgehammers is purely to deal with the Assault Mode Maxman, right? But the thing is, the tanks are kind of going in too close, right? They're, they're like, they don't have the range to stay back and live against the Stonecallers. Stonecallers are kind of just eviscerating all of the tanks. Minus one little pack over here and I guess the flankers. Who are not being dealt with because of the insane Obel Javelin, by the way. Which I do love. Okay. And it's another dub, man. Alright, dude. Alright. Let's see what we do this turn after all, then. <laughs> oh, well, I know what we're going here, dude. Okay, because this is literally the theme of the replay, as described by uh, we and Pirat on the Discord. Ooh. We go into the Phoenixes. You know what? I actually quite like that. I actually quite like that, man. I'd still like to see us mass recruit and just put, like, another unit of chaff here. I'd still like to see a little bit of that. Oh, we go for a missile instead, so we can't mass recruit anymore now, but... Oh, wow. Fortress to counteract that flank. Well, it's definitely going to buy a hell of a lot of time for the maximum to do what they need to get done. So we'll achieve that. These phoenixes so, so aggressively positioned. I feel like we're kind of committing to just eventually using jump drive on the phoenixes with this kind of positioning and just getting them out of there. Like, they can't stay here forever. Okay. Fangs come out. Yeah, so red is trying to just protect these, like, backline entities, right? From, uh, from the maxman. He's trying to protect the storm callers and the, um, acolytes from the maxman, which is what I thought we'd be doing, you know? I thought we'd be going, like, fang, fang, fang. Or at least one pack of fangs, you know? Oh god. That last minute missile kinda stings, actually. That was the last possible second missile from Red. And this fortress is gonna hold up those tanks forever on that back line. That building will not go down anymore. And so while the phoenixes are gonna get it done... They only have a couple of marksmen to really contend with at this point before they'll kinda just win the day. And these are assault modes, so the ranges kind of suck. Oh. Not quite able to take the building over here on the side, man. I got a little close there for a second with this level 3 maxman, and the phoenixes do go down at the end. And suddenly it's a little bit of a steep defeat. Alright. Oh god. <laughs> Okay, right, okay. I just want to clarify that this is where it begins. Okay, so we currently have a what? Uh, is this like a one-turn cooldown javelin? No, I think it's a two-round cooldown javelin, right? I think it's four turns by default. We have double skill specialist. Every other round, we get to drop the javelin, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Okay, man. Well, that's pretty insane already. Okay, more missiles coming out. Okay, these are blue missiles. I just had to check that real quick. What else we got going on here, man? We got 200 supply left to burn. I wouldn't be opposed to just stand to sell these guys off. Oh, then again, I guess we got a benefit from the javelin over here. So these tanks will actually get something done this round, which is just hilarious. For God's sake, man. Give this man... Give, give Red a break, please. Constant stream of javelins coming in against a pocket of super high-value enemies. Just absolute nonsense. And again, another 200 supply saved. Ooh, the phoenixes are in really, uh, really, really exposed position now. Yeah, again, I just feel like getting the frontline chaff on the field would help a lot. Either that or you've got to move the phoenixes, right? Oh my god, the tanks actually don't make it in. They just get mowed down a little bit too fast, I guess, by the uh, stormies. And so even with just the god to your javelin... We just die much, much too quickly. These Stormcallers are getting far too much value, really. I think we need Subtree and Blitz on the Crawlers. I think that would help a lot as well. Um, so they're not just dying to the fire. Wow, and we go for the rank 8 Stang? Yeah, I really thought we'd go for the Overlords. 
to be honest. Given that he has very low range maximum with him being assault mode, like he has very, very few tools to deal with that. Oh wow, we've had enough. Okay, so instead of trying to win the chaff battle through making our chaff like better, we're just going for mass kill everything. Oh my god, sticky oil round and incendiary bomb Vulcans. Yeah, we really, really do need subterranean bl uh, blitz on these crawlers, man. There's too much fire on the ground. And so they'll never get past this point of the map ever. Uh, or even honestly, most of them will die before they even get past this point, right? Because now the enemy stormcrawlers are going to be shooting here, here, and here. Which almost guarantees the deaths. I think of like f four out of the five packs of crawlers at the back. Whereas if they have subterranean blitz and maybe a rank up here and there then at least they can definitely get through the fire, right? And they demand more of a stalwart answer from your opponent rather than just dying for free. So I almost feel like we are indirect... Like, we're kind of playing with no chaff here with the way that this is currently set up. These are some aggro goddamn overlords, too. I like Red's players here, by the way. This I don't know so much about, man. Because this goddamn javelin, this tungsten rod, is... Up again next round, and it's going to cleave so much value from this backline here. But look at the fire on the ground. Look at that fire, dude. Look at these poor crawlers, man. <laughs> like, honestly, there's so much fire on the ground that they need Subterranean Blitz and Rank 2 in order to even make it through this, I think. So it's quite the investment, but still, I do think it would be quite worth it. Because I think beyond this fire, it's like, what, some level 2 Arc Lights? That, that, that you're dealing with, right, in terms of chaff clear. And there's only, like, four of them. So I think that red's chaff clear is deceptively, deceptively bad, you know? Deceptively counterable here. Interesting to see if we do it. We are chewing out wins, though, dude. The Assault Mode Maximum, by the way, I want to point out, doing almost nothing now. Um, it's one of those things where it's, like, a big power spike. It's kind of like uh, damage-sharing seal balls, right? It can win you like one or two rounds if you take your opponent by surprise. And then it can start to act against you a little bit. Okay, man. Scorpions come out. A cell came out just now as well. Okay, the fangs are coming down. We have so much supply here, by the way. Triple fangs. Okay, so it's got to be fang, 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 right? Has. Obviously, they're just going to die like instantly. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. Even with the shields. Ooh, I don't like that investment, Pirat. I don't like that investment at all. Yes, yeah, so portable shields are really good if your opponent is going for non-fire-based chaff clear. For example, arc lights, right? If your opponent's got mass arc lights, you suddenly drop the fang shields. It effectively takes twice as many shots from an arc light to kill a pack of fangs, right? But if they already have fire on the field then these shields count for almost nothing. I, th I really think we'd be way, way better off here having invested in the Subterranean Blitz and some ranks in the Crawlers. I, li I like the Fang placement, by the way. I don't think that that's, I think that that's not the problem. I think even just like one pack of Fangs here and one here would be fine. So that all of the Storm Crawlers are then shooting at like one little spot. That would be really, really nice too. Um, just to reduce the spread of enemy flames. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something that you can think about as well. But yeah, uh, getting it so that these crawlers don't just die to the fire, I think would be a much, much higher priority than Portable Shield. Which, as you can see, I mean, the Portable Shield <laughs> just didn't count for much of anything. Oh, God, oh God I totally missed the goddamn Javelin. Oh, God, I'm, I'm the worst. It's like the entire point of the replay. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that, man. I'm going to go ahead and skip back and watch the action replay of the Javelin coming in. <laughs> All right, man, here we go again. We're once again at the beginning of the round here, and I gotta say, as questionable as the uh, shields were on the fangs, and by the way, both players actually went into uh, some range-enhanced scorpions here as well, which I kind of missed. As bad as, as as bad as I feel the portable shields are, dude, it's not like Red Ape misplaying a little bit too, man, because, oh my goodness, like, you should know that your opponent has double skill specialist javelin. That's kind of a big deal, and stacking up all your giant units like that. Oh... Oh, God. I mean, there goes, like, 1,500 supply in a single javelin. Really quite painful. But check out the scorpions, dude. They eviscerated the hell out of the Vulcans over here now. The tanks are still going to get the building kill. A little bit of building health over here for red would work wonders, by the way. It's only sledgehammers. 
Like, they're not going to be able to kill the buildings super, super quickly on this side if you just put a couple of ranks into this. So this is one of those games that, upon review, you can look back and think to yourself, wow, man, there's a lot of things that could go down differently here. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's a two-turn cooldown. Yeah, a two-round cooldown. Lightning Storm. Absolutely mental. I mean, at this point, you get, you got, you, as soon as you got skill specialist, you might as well just, just pick up every single uh, skill that you come across, right? You know, I wonder if it's worth some. Ah, um... oh, once again, we're not going to be investing in the crawlers, but I wonder if it is worth some uh, sentry turrets, like one here, 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 and here. Spending a good amount of supply on those to prevent the missiles coming in and to prevent the shots from the overlords landing. I wonder if that's worth it. Ah, probably not. Sentry turrets are really unreliable, right? Oh, like the missile interceptor. Pretty unreliable. Okay. The utterly random war factory comes out from red. That's not that random. Let's rotate the camera a bit so we can actually see what's going on in this round. Otherwise, the lightning storms are going to cover everything up. Um... The War Factory will be shooting down the missiles, like the sticky oil bombs and the incendiary bombs from the Vulcan. But is that all? I mean, I feel like Red really wanted to place it like here. Like in the midst of everything, but there's obviously just not, not close to enough room though. It's very exposed. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. He's moved it back a little bit. I was going to say, isn't it just going to get kind of annihilated by the Marksman and the uh, Scorpion here? But it's got a little bit of cover now. Still feels a little bit random, though. That's a huge, huge cash investment. The Vulcans in the middle actually die so quickly, but it kind of doesn't matter because their only job is to just spam a lake of fire on the field, right? Lightning Storm's going to connect bigly over here and tickle down the Overlords quite a bit. We can right the camera now slightly. This flank not making it in without the help of the Javelin. Oh my god, but it just doesn't matter. The Maxman had other ideas. And plinks down the base. And now with Electromag already on the field. To kind of slow the war factory. It's not going to get a massive amount done. Some annoying chaff left alive over here. But that's about going to be it. Oh, nice red gets to live for another round. So we get to see another javelin dude. Are you kidding me? We get to see another one man. Oh my god. And we've got to go Iron Blast here right? <laughs> <laughs> why at this point, you know? Like, why are you even... It comes to a point of diminishing returns, man. I almost want us to lose this round. So that we can see the one turn cooldown javelin. And we're just blasting it out every single round. It'd be so funny. Oh my god. Okay, the wasp had to come up from red, genuinely speaking. That's actually just a pretty good player. Uh, the extra Vulcan... I think his projectiles might get countered by the War Factory with this position right here. Ooh, we stand to actually sell some Neds over here on this side as well. Additional Fangs come down. All right, all right. Okay, there's the Javelin. No, Red. No, what are you doing? What? No way, dude. No, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. He's summoning his additional... <laughs> He's summoning his additional overlord on the javelin, bro. Are you kidding me with this? No way, man. Like, when does this spawn in? Will the javelin land before the overlord spawns in? For red's sake, I really, really hope so. Because I cannot believe that this is real, dude. <laughs> this feels like a setup. Oh my god. I don't even care what the, what the hell else happens for the rest of the round. I just want to see if this goes down like I think it might. Here comes the Overlord. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. If you're red, be honest. How many of you concede the game right now, dude? How many of you just surrender? Because let me tell you something. I'd be uninstalling the game. Screw surrendering, man. I'd be off. I'd be gone, man. Go play some Minion Masters or some of the auto battler on Steam. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God, man. That's... <laughs> Oh, God. The highs and lows of Mechabellum, dude. And of course, you know what, man? We in Pirat. He knew that was going to happen. That's the craziest thing, right? That's the wrinkled brain players that this man is known for. 
Holy crap, dude. That was the great... That might actually be the greatest surprise ending I've ever seen. <laughs> In a mecha game, dude. Now I've seen some crazy stuff. Oh my god. Hey, thanks for watching, man, Mr. We... Uh, thanks for submitting the replay, actually, I should say. Mr. Wien Pirat. Awesome! Make sure to submit your own insane, ridiculous replays in the uh, share your replay section of the official Mechabellum Discord, which is always is linked down below in the pinned comment and all that good stuff. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you also did enjoy this absolute, absolute shenanigans of a game. And we'll catch all of you guys this tad bit later, Ben.